rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, did vouchsafe to give joy to the whole world, grant we beseech thee that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gloria Patri, Filio e Spirito e Santo, dico derat in principio e nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In tuoi volatari Dei, et den crucifica di un tutum eum. Aude tolu nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci cenum et terra. <coughs> Confitio da mi potenti, mi ad Maria e ad Virgine, mi ad Italia Tanto, vi ad Juan Battista, Santo Fosso Sveto e Paolo, vi ad Juan Maria, vi ad Nondus Sancti Voli, sulla terra. Qui ad Juan Vinini, spoi perzione, vi Confitio Deo Omnipotenti, Beate Maria Sente Virgini, Beato Betania Cangelo, Beato Ioan Battiste, Santi Apostoli Spetto e Paolo, Omnibus Sancti Settimi Pater, Quia de Calvinimis Cogitazione Verbo et Opere, Meo Culpa, Meo Culpa, Mea Maxima Culpa. Ileo Prego Beata Maria Sente Virgine, Beato Betania Marcangelo, Beati Ioan Battista, Santos Apostolos Spetus Paulum, Omnes Sanctos et Tetra Terra, Orare Pome, Ad Omnium Deum Nostrum. Miseria tu vesci, mi putens Deus, si tu ispetatis vesci, ispetut et vos et vita me terra. Amen. Urgenzi ma scusione, me promissione, peca torno su rolo, te liberi non sono di potenti, ma di tutti i dominis. Amen. Deus tu pulvers e spetutitatis na, et plens tu eletabit or in pen, ostendi non visto abri misericordia tua, et salutare tu in gran nobis, domine gaudi razione mea, et flamo meus et et regna, nobilus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, parve Deus. Eduxi Deus Domini, in spe, Alleluia, et in amico seiorum operuit mare, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Attendite popule meus, lego meam, inclinate aurum vestram, in verbo oris me. Gloria, Patria, Filio, et Spiritui Santo, sicuderat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum, Amen. Eduxi Deus Dominus in spe, Alleluia, et in amico seiorum operuit mare, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus bone voluntatis, Laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gracias a Jesus de mi propia madre, gloria a tu am. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Onipotens. Domine Filio Unigenite, Jesu Christe. Domine Deus, Omnius Dei, Filius Patris. Qui tolle speccato mundi, miserere nobis. Qui tolle speccato mundi, suscite e deprecazione nostra. Qui se ne se dexeram patris miserere nobis. Quoriam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sanctus spiritu in gloria Dei patris. Amen. 
Heksa Bobis et cum spirito tuo. Ordenus. Omnipotens et eterne Deus, qui pascali sacramentum in reconciliationis humane federe contulisti, lamentibus nostis, ut quod professione celebramus imitemur effectu, per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tum, qui decum vivida regna dominitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per Romia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordenus. Ecclesiae tue quaesumus dobre precis locautus admite, ut istruxis ad fece salsibus et juroribus un efesi secure tibi servie quimitate. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tum, qui decum vivida regna dominitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lex Epistoli Beatsi Petri Apostoli. Carissimi, Christus semul proprecatis nostris mortuus est, justus pro injustus, ut nos offerit Deo, modificatus quidem carne, vivificatus autem spiritu, in quo et his, qui in tacere erant, spiritus veniens predicavit qui incredibly fur erat aliquando, quando expectabat Dei patientia mediebus noe, cum fabricaretur aca, in qua pauci, ed est otto anime salve fate sum per aqua. Quod et vos non similis forme salvos faci baptisma, non carnes de positio sordium, sed conscientiem bone interrogatio in Deum, per resurrectionem Iesu Christi Domini nostri, qui est in dextra Dei. Deo gratia. Et dies quam feci Dominus, exultemus in leitae marginea, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Deus Dominus et illucit nobis. Alleluia, alleluia, dici de incensibus, quia Dominus regnavit ad igno. Victime pascali laudes, timolem Christiani, agnus credem nipoles, Sequentia Sancti Vangeli secundo Matteo, Gloria Tibi Domine. In illo tempore undicem discipoli abiero di Galilea, in mantem ubi constituera tilis Iesus. Ed videntes em adorat verunt, quidem autem dubita verunt, ad accedens Iesus locutus est eis, dicens, Dateris miti omnis potestas in cielo et in terra, e untes ergo docede omnes gentes, Baptizantes eos in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, docentes eos servare, omnie quecunque mandavi vobis. Ed ecce ego vobiscum, sum omnibus diebus, usque ad consumationem seque. Laus tibi Christi. On this Easter Friday, Friday in the octave of Pascha, 
the lesson is taken from the first letter of St. Peter the Apostle. Beloved, Christ died as a ransom paid once for all on behalf of our sins. He the innocent for us the guilty, so as to present us in God's sight. In his mortal nature he was done to death, but endowed with fresh life in his spirit, and it was in his spirit that he went and preached to the spirits who lay in prison. Long before they had refused belief, hoping that God would be patient with them in the days of Noah. That ark which Noah was then building, in which a few souls, eight in all, found refuge as they passed through the waves, was a type of the baptism which saves us now. Our baptism is not a putting away of outward defilement. It is the test which assures us of a good conscience before God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who sits now at the right hand of God. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, the eleven disciples took their journey into Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had bidden them meet him. When they saw him there, they fell down to worship, though some were still doubtful. But Jesus came near and spoke to them. All authority in heaven and earth, he said, has been given to me. You, therefore, must go out, making disciples of all nations, and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all the commandments which I have given you. And behold, I am with you all through the days that are coming, until the consummation of the world. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are our among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass on this, as we said, Friday in the octave of Pascha. Five times our Lord uh, appeared uh, to the apostles, the disciples, and that is why five times the priest during the mass uh, turns and faces the people to say Dominus Vobiscum, or greets five times the people Dominus Vobiscum, or in the case of a bishop, of course, at the beginning of mass, Pax Vobis, the same words with which our Lord himself greeted the apostles in his first resurrection appearance. Peace be with you. Today's stational church in Rome, so on our spiritual pilgrimage of the churches in Rome that we've been through all through Lent uh, and Passion Tide and Holy Week and even indeed in Easter Week, today the stational church is at St Mary of the Martyrs. Now, of course, this speaks to the event that happened exactly a week ago today. Last week, of course, was Good Friday. And you will have noticed that through this week, this Paschal week, we have not mentioned uh, any of the saints whose saints days have fallen this week. Notably for us, of course, St George, whose feast fell on the 23rd of April on Tuesday. Uh, latterly then, St Mark. Uh, the evangelists who otherwise would be given uh, a great feast, these now have been moved to next week. They are transferred to next week so that nothing, of course, may take the place of our celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All this week, indeed, uh, all this, these eight days are given to us and we are to think of them as a kind of extended Easter Sunday. Every day of this week has been Easter for us. We've each day of uh, the octave thus far being presented with a different occurrence of Christ with his apostles. And today things reach a kind of climax. Now, uh, because today we, 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 have, our, uh, we have our Lord uh, on the mountain in Galilee just before his ascension. Now the gospel stops, of course, just before his ascension. And our thoughts and reflections also, too, will stop just before his ascension. Ascension day, of course, is coming, uh, but is not yet. Uh, but key, of course, for us is the continuation of yesterday's theme. Remember, yesterday we celebrated Mary Magdalene, the Apostle of the Resurrection, and we reflected how we, in our turn, are called, like her, to proclaim the resurrection, to proclaim the new life that Jesus Christ offers those who will repent and believe, who will turn to him, who will put their faith and trust in him, who will through him come to God and come to a loving relationship with God. Through him come to know the love of God, which of course was made manifest supremely 
uh, in his sacrificial death upon the cross. Now, St. Peter, at the beginning of the epistle today, refers to the crucifixion as a ransom. And uh, without going too deep into uh, uh, theology, um, there is a, uh, a strong strain, particularly within Protestantism, to emphasize uh, an aspect of this ransom. Whereas in orthodoxy and in the holy tradition of the church, rather than suggesting, as others would, that Jesus' death uh, was uh, uh, necessary to fulfill uh, some kind of um, uh, obligation uh, to God, remember everything that we'd heard during Lent of God to the Israelites about the observance of the law, but also about the ritual sacrifices. What care I of your sacrificial animals and your burnt offerings? It's your hearts I want. In other words, it's our love. And it was love upon the cross that Jesus gave uh, uh, in ransom for us, as it were. Yes, in many ways, uh, we understand our Lord to have taken upon himself uh, uh, the ransom that might, we might, that might be paid to God as, as a form of uh, justice, uh, as a form of, of having aggrieved God, as a form of atonement, as we say. But really, uh, really, our Lord's sacrifice is more to be understood as an expression of supreme love by Christ on our behalf, rather than uh, as necessarily some kind of fulfilment or repayment of a debt owed to God. That's never been the point. God has continually said in the Old Testament, and he says in Christ, uh, it's, it's, it's your love that I desire, it's your love that I want. And of course, when God says that, he doesn't mean to say it in the way that we might think uh, of, of someone uh, asking or desiring or demanding our love. Rather, he's saying that the whole point of existence, the whole point of life, the whole point of God himself, the whole point of Christ, the whole point of creation, the whole point of us being alive is all an expression of this sacrificial love, of this charity, of that sacrificial love, of love that loves for love's sake, that exists between the three persons of the Trinity and by extension was born into the world in creation and by extension is uh, what we ought to be living in love with the Trinity back and with each other as it were. It's all about love. It's all about selfless love. It's all about sacrificial love. It's all about self-emptying love. It's all about loving for love's sake. Now, of course, we, from our human perspective, may sometimes say very gratefully, particularly when, of course, um, uh, well, remember the, uh, the, the Magdalene, uh, he loves who has been forgiven most. And, of course, we may express our gratitude uh, for uh, the love of God made manifest in Christ by saying that Christ has died for my sins, he has taken uh, the, the, the pain and the suffering and the punishment of my sins away from me. All of that, of course, is in part true, but is not the point of the crucifixion. The point of the crucifixion is the ultimate sacrifice of love for love's sake. Now, St. Peter goes on in his epistle today to refer, of course, to Sheol, to Hades, to Limbo. And we reflected upon that earlier in the week. Uh, our understanding that when, in the three days between his crucifixion and his resurrection, our Lord descended into hell. We say it in the Creed, of course, which we have sung all this week. He descended into hell, and the purpose of that was so that all those preceding generations before would have the opportunity to recognize and believe in him, to recognize and see the Messiah. That's the love and the generosity of God in Christ. That all those who had believed and, and expected and long awaited the prospect of the Messiah were given the opportunity to see him and to recognize him, to accept him, to embrace him and to love him. And in so doing, then be released as it were, from limbo, uh, and go on their onward journey toward uh, God. And this is why we think of the cross uh, as being a kind of a central point, as it were, in our time, in our concept of time. That uh, the cross stands in the middle of time, and we have all of the old covenant and all of past history before, and afterwards we have uh, the period of grace, 
as, as the Apostle calls it, from now until our Lord's return. All of which made possible by virtue of the cross. And because what happens upon the cross is that the eternal covenant, so the beginning, as we said yesterday, the beginning of the relationship that was supposed to exist between God and man, that wonderful expression in Genesis of Adam walking in the garden, talking with God. Epitomize, that describes beautifully how our relationship with God is supposed to be. And Christ upon the cross enables that relationship to become a reality for us again. His single, once and for all, ablation, offering of himself upon the cross in love enables love to be realized between us and God. Not because God wasn't loving us beforehand, but because we weren't very good at loving him. And now we have the opportunity to love him. And just as those who went before the cross, who did love God, were given the opportunity to see the Messiah and be released and, uh, and, and experience paradise, so too are we all given the same opportunity in this period of grace before our Lord's second coming. We are given this opportunity to recognise, accept, embrace, acknowledge and believe and love and love as God loves us. And that, my brothers and sisters, is key. Our Lord says at the end of today's Gospel, teaching them all things that I have commanded you. And of course, as St John records, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And we reflected on that earlier in Lent, as I have loved you. In other words, we're to love one another as Jesus loved. As Jesus loved. Which is why we say that charity and the exercise of sacrificial love in our faith as Christians is so much more than just simply niceness. It's so much more than just simply being nice people and good people. All our actions and all our being and all that we do should be motivated by this generosity of love, of sacrificial love, of loving even sometimes when it hurts ourselves of loving God particularly, though it sometimes hurts ourselves, of loving one another, even though sometimes it may hurt ourselves. And this is why we, as we reflected again this week, we should love through our pain, love through our suffering, love through our loss, love through our anger, love through our bitterness. Always love. Remember right at the beginning of the holy season and on Quinquagesima Sunday, just before we entered Ash Wednesday in the season of Lent, at the end of Jessima, we are given at Mass, the Sunday Mass, the Epistle on Charity from St Paul. That beautiful uh, 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 description from uh, Corinthians. And remember he said, I could have faith to move mountains, but if I have not charity, if I have not love, then it means nothing. And that, my brothers and sisters, is a very important lesson for us as Christians to remember. That though we may indeed have great faith, though we may indeed put all our trust in God, though we may, may indeed uh, live our lives faithfully, observing all God's commandments, observing uh, the church's teachings, um, keeping our Christian discipline and striving for holiness, saying our prayers at the right times, though we may have great faith, though we may and can do all those things, if we are not doing them motivated by love of God, self-emptying love for God, sacrificial love toward God, and sacrificial love toward each other, then it's all meaningless. You see, my brothers and sisters, that our coming to Mass, our saying our prayers, our listening to the homilies, all these things are, will only have meaning to us if we observe them and perform them, not out of duty, but out of love making a sacrifice of our time, making a sacrifice uh, of, uh, of our, of our uh, giving.
gifts, making a sacrifice of our presence, making a sacrifice of everything about us. You see, when we come to Mass, we should be active participation, is a phrase often used wrongly, generally, in liturgy these days. But active participation means, in the liturgy, for everyone to actively participate with their whole mind, their whole heart, their whole body, their whole strength, their whole soul. And because liturgy, because worship, of course, is the ultimate way in which we worship God. Because remember, the liturgy itself, the divine liturgy, is not an earthly thing, but it is us joining with that divine liturgy of heaven. It is us joining in with that divine liturgy that was begun by Christ on Passion Sunday and concluded on Easter Sunday. Remember that Holy Week and the Sacrum Triduum, uh, we follow it in, in, a, in a kind of chronological order, commemorating the events as they happen chronologically, but all of them are contained within each and every offering of the Mass. The, the whole life of Christ is contained within every Mass. From his public ministry, from his baptism, to his uh, passion, his death, and to his resurrection, it's all here in the divine liturgy. It's all recalled, it's all commemorated, it's all remembered. Because we join in, we become one with God through this experience. We enter into, as we reflected during Holy Week, his timelessness. And that's why my brothers and sisters particularly we should be clock-watching during Divine Liturgy. The whole point is to enter into God's timelessness. And the whole liturgy is designed in such a way as to enable and facilitate you to be able to be drawn in to God's timelessness. Now, I might add, of course, that the homily, technically, is not part of the liturgy. So, of course, you may be conscious of time, <laughs> sometimes, with the homily. But the rest, the rest of the divine, in all the, all the divine liturgy itself, is about being transported into God, being transported into oneness with him. And which is why in the full sung liturgy, all uh, uh, the ceremonial and etc. appeals to the senses of sight, the wonderful spectacle of the vestments and of the, of the altar and of the, of, of the ministers and the, of the church, the smells of incense, the bells, the music, all appearing, all appealing to our senses so that even physically we may be transported and taken into God's timelessness, taken into the eternal worship of heaven. And that's why, for example, why particularly this happens, of course, at the Sanctus, when we literally enter into the Holy of Holies, the, the holiest mystery of, of, of the central part of the divine liturgy. And at one, one time in the West, and still uh, in the East, they used to wave flabella, as they're called. Great uh, fans, uh, sometimes with bells, sometimes with feathers. In old pictures of uh, the uh, bishops of Rome, you'll often see two flabella beside, carried beside uh, the pontiff, two great ostrich-plumed uh, fans. Well, these were used at the Sanctus, and uh, were beaten the air. And so that to, to give the impression of the beating wings of the seraphim and the cherubim and of the, of the thrones of the powers of the, domina of, the of, of the dominations of the angels and archangels, speaking to us of being transported, us entering into the eternal worship of heaven, where of course the angelic, the angelic throng continually cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. And all of this, all of this, is so that we may love, is so that we may be able to just completely self-empty ourselves into the worship of Almighty God. 
Now, of course, in our daily basis, in our daily lives, it's a little more difficult to, uh, to, to live like that. As wonderful, of course, as some of us would, 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 would love to live with a perpetual divine liturgy going on all the time, uh, we, we can't do that. But that's why Holy Mother Church, over the centuries, has developed devotions to enable us to punctuate and sanctify our day, to remind us at various times of our lives being lived in love for God as well as for each other. So that we punctuate the day with the Angelus, the remembrance of the Incarnation. In Eastertide, of course, uh, it's substituted with the Regina Celi. Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven. We remember, we recall uh, the joy of Our Lady. And seven times will I praise the, the Lord, etc., from the Psalms. So we know, of course, the development of the, uh, of the office, particularly for our, with, by our uh, religious brothers and sisters, but by extension, too many lay people also pray the breviary, pray, pray the divine office, punctuate the day to sanctify it. And I've reflected before with you many times about how we might consciously try to uh, live our lives ever aware of God. Remember, that is the definition of holy fear. It doesn't mean to live perpetually frightened of God. It means to live continuously aware of his presence. And by punctuating our day with moments of sanctification, of deliberate prayer, of deliberate intention, we can consciously strive to live at one with him, to live almost perpetually worshipping with him, to be literally living in love and in union with him. And in so doing, of course, it should then be much easier to love one another. It should be much easier to love our neighbour. It should be much easier to give sacrificially to those who have need. It must, it would, it, because by extension, by living in love and in union with God, we realise that God loves us all. And that, of course, is what our Lord meant in the summary of the law of the two great commandments. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and to love your neighbour. If you keep the first, the second automatically follows. And if the second isn't automatically following for you who think you are keeping the first, then you're not keeping the first properly. It's all about love. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what we are charged to proclaim and to bring others to enter into this new life in Christ, to enter into this living relationship uh, of oneness with God. And ultimately, of course, for us in the Holy Eucharist is the supreme moment when we literally become one with him and he with us, when we receive the sacrament of his love, body, blood, soul and divinity upon our tongues. We become healed, restored, forgiven, refreshed, renewed. And we should become too transformed. Because at the moment of Holy Communion, we, as it were, realise again what first was given to us at our baptism when we were blessed and made holy, when we were cleansed from all sin and dedicated to God. Similarly, at the moment of Holy Communion, that occurs again and we should leave mass as changed and transformed people leaving united with God let us then my brothers and sisters continue to strive to live in Christ to live in love and in union with God and with each other let us remember to live sacrificially for God. And in so doing, we will find it so much easier to live for and with each other. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. For by this will the world recognise you as my disciples, if you have love one for another. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Alleluia, et diem festum celebitatis solemnum domino in progenies vestas, legitum sempiternum diem, Alleluia, Alleluia.
secula seculorum. Amen. Amen. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sosum corda, habemus ad dominum, gracias ad amus domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum est, ecum et salutare, te quidem domine omni tempore, sed in hoc papit potissimum die, gloriosius predicare cum pascum nostrum emulatus est Christus, ipse enum perus et agnus, cui abstur et peccatum mundi, cui morte nostrum oriendo distrupsi, et vita resurgendo reperravi, et in eu cum angelis et archangelis, cum flores et dominationibus, cum cui omni milice celestis exegitus, teum non gloria et tue carius, sine fine dicentes. Sanctus. 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 Dominus Deus Sabaeon, pleni sum celi et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excessis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excessis.
keluar gue gagal dua ribu Erronia secula seculorum. Amen. Ardemus precepti salutaribus maliti divinis luciale pomati. Aldemus duce. Ante noster qui es in cielis, sanctificetum nomum tuum, nai veni ad regum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, si put in cielo et in terra. Padre nostrum quadriante nobis fagie, dimite nobis, debita nostra, sicula nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Sed libra nossa malo. Erra mia secula seculorum. Amen. Aixa Domini sit semper avobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Ece annus Dei, ece quit tolet peccatum undi. Domine non sum dignus ut intre sub tectum meum, se tantum dic verbo et sen nabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus ut intre sub tectum meum, se tantum dic verbo et sen nabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus ut intre sub tectum meum, se tantum dic verbo et sen nabitur anima mea. 
brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Ist mihi omnis potestas in cielo et in terra. Alleluia. Eum des doce de omniscientes, baptizante Deus in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dominus obiscum et in spirito tuo. Corre. 
es vice Christus tamne populum tuum, et quem eternis dinat, dinatus es renovare miseris, a temporaribus culpis dinander absolve. Per Dominum nostrum Jesu Christum fiendum tuum, et ecum vivida regna ad unanitatis unitus sancti Deus, per nam ia secula seculorum. Amen. Orde. Christus Domini Deus nostri, ut quos divine tribuis facici passione cadere, cum male sol sine sabia cere felico. Per Dominum nostrum Jesu Christum fiendum tuum, et ecum vivida regna ad unanitatis unitus sancti Deus, Per Romnia secula seculorum. Amen. Tu Domino Suaviscum, et con Spirito Tuo. Ite misa est, Alleluia, Alleluia. Deo gratias, Alleluia, Alleluia. In nome Domini Benedictum, es hoc nunc et usque in secula, ut hor nostrum in nomine Domini, tui feci celum et terra. Benedicat vos omnipotentem. Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. In nomine Domini Benedictum, et et Spiritus Tuo, initium Sancti Evangelii, secundum Iovane, Gloria a Tibi Domine, in principio ad Ebevum, Ebevum ad Acabodeum, Deus ad Ebevum, occherat in principio ad Cudeum, omni prinsum factus, omni simso factum, is niempo factum est. In iso vita ad arti, vita ad arti, lux hominum, lux in tenebris, luce in tenebris, non comprehenderum. Tu et homo missus e velco, ne vero racci vane, sic venit in testimoni, bu testimoni, vi venit un lumen et omnes presum tui ilum. Non erat ille lux, ne vero testimoni, vi venit un lumen, erat lux vero, quel lumen ad omnem hominem, rientem in hoc mundum. E mundo e rato, mundo sripsum factus, e se mundo non cognovi, e proprio veniti som non recepperum. Corpora al tempo recepperum, tem de esso restati, in filio se fieri, che svi crendi in nomine eus. Qui non è sanguinibus, nex volontati calis, nex volontati viris, ed ex deo nati sunt. Et verbum carro factum est. Et abit abit in nomis, e verimus gloria, meus gloria, in quanti una genetia e pace, plenum grazia e veritatis. Deo grazias, 